We've learned that our equation for magnetic flux is flux equals B times A, where B is our magnetic field strength, and A is the area through which this magnetic field is passing through. In this tutorial, we're going to look at the A in this equation, and we'll recognize that it can be considered to be the effective area when there's angles involved. So to help with visualizing, let's look at an analogy here. A hula hoop in a rainstorm. The rain represents our magnetic field. According to our equation here, the greater the magnetic field strength B, well, the more rain passing through the loop, and the greater the flux. The hula hoop itself represents our loop surrounding the area that we're considering. Recognize that we're measuring the amount of flux or rain that's passing through our loop. The bigger the area, the bigger the flux. So far, so good? Now, let's recognize that it's common in various electrical devices, motors, generators, and such, to change the flux by adjusting the effective area of the loop simply by changing the angle of the loop. Let's adjust the angle of our loop from the horizontal and we can move to a top view and see that the loop from the falling rain's point of view is no longer a circle. The effective area or shadow area, like a shadow that it would make on the ground, is now an ellipse. And we can see that the ellipse has a smaller area for the rain to pass through as compared to our original full circle. If we change the angle a bit more, the shadow is even less than the original circle, and the effective area drops down more. Let's adjust the angle again. Another increase in the angle from the horizontal means that our effective area has dropped again. And we consider the magnetic field hasn't changed, the size of the loop hasn't changed, but the amount of rain that can pass through that loop has changed, and therefore the flux has changed. If we rotated it even more to 90 degrees from the horizontal, we can see that the effective area drops down to zero. Again, the magnetic field hasn't changed, the size of the loop hasn't changed, but now the amount of rain passing through the loop has definitely changed. It's now zero. The flux is zero. If we go beyond zero, the rain starts entering the loop in the opposite direction from where we started. This is a flux in the opposite direction. The magnetic field is effectively going backwards through the loop as compared to our starting situation. Now that we can visualize the concept of a change in loop angle causes a change in flux, let's consider the related math so we can accurately calculate the flux in these situations. If we look at a side view of our angled loop, we recognize that we can draw the shadow or effective area here. And then we can make a right triangle. We'll identify the sides and recognize that flattening the loop onto the shadow involves multiplying the area by cos of our angle, much the same as looking at components with vectors. Thus, for situations where the magnetic field is not passing perpendicular through the plane of our loop, our equation for flux could be written as the flux equals B times, and instead of just A, a more effective A, that is A cos theta, where theta is the angle of our loop from our perpendicular plane. 